should be able to uh, to see my screen there, uh, Simon. There it is now. Yeah. Now we're looking at the. It's not in uh, presentation mode. Uh, it is not at the moment. You're absolutely right. Okay. So we're looking at the right screen. That's okay. Brilliant. Okay. Let's let me just rearrange uh, things here a little bit, so that we're ready to go. And am I able to see the questions box? I'm not at the moment. Are you going to monitor that for me, sir? I'll 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 let you see the questions box in just a second. I'm going to make that. So now you're an organizer, so you should have direct yes, access to that. That is superb. Okay, so Rishi Patel, Master of the Markets, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Okay, a very warm welcome this afternoon to the Master of the Markets uh, Round the Clock Trader uh, webinar, Strategy, Does It Actually Work? is the topic of the presentation uh, this afternoon. My name is Rishi Patel, co-founder of Master of the Markets, the Elite Traders Conference and the Traders Open Day. A very warm welcome to the Round the Clock Trader webinar uh, by Master of the Markets, proud to be sponsoring the London Investment Week and all of Simon Campbell's superb work. So uh, thank you very much, Simon, for presenting us uh, the opportunity to be with you all here today. Very small risk disclaimer before you carry on. Trading on margin does carry a high level of risk and might not be suitable for investors. High degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. All the information we've provided is for educational purposes only in Vedanta Trading Limited. And the presenters are not financial advisors and don't recommend any of the securities in any kind. Any securities that are mentioned are cited only for illustrative and educational purposes. You should be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. With that said, I'll continue on into my presentation. I assume that most people here will have seen me present in the past, and so I'll only give a very short insight of my background. Uh, my degree in computer science, I started a video production business, uh, and then went on to actually start trading financial markets uh, back in around about the mid part of 2008, roughly speaking. In 2009 onwards, to trading the financial markets uh, full time uh, on a professional basis from a trading floor, uh, where we actually coached, mentored between myself and my business partner Tiru, who you see here on screen, probably between 15 and 20,000 people on a one to one basis in group environments in a lecture hall between uh, when we started and now. So a lot of experience in the trading space, a lot of experience in the trader mentoring space as well, giving traders the ability to be able to adjust their trading strategies and systems so they can optimize from getting from ups and downs through the consistent profitability. Um, this is my fantastic team who there's no way we could do any of this work without. Um, so I'm very grateful to them. We're also founders of the Traders Open Day um, and I've also given a talk in the Easy Forex conference in China, just there. Our live trading room is known for its transparency. Uh, all of the trades we take are logged on a very transparent basis. Also founders of the Elite Traders Conference as well. Uh, so, um, Round the Clock Trader Live, I hope you all attended. Uh, I gave a presentation there as well. That was Simon's event. And as Simon just mentioned, the um, Live Trading Week here in January 2017 um, was something we ran just a week or so back. Uh, and um, we did actually take a couple of trades in the Live Energy uh, just there. In fact, if you look at my screen here at the moment, uh, you'll be able to see the actual journal. Um, that we were actually using for the actual live trading week. And interestingly, what happened on the first day, um, not in line with our expectations, was that uh, we took three trades, um, and all of which uh, went for either a trailing or an initial stop loss. Um, so we opened the uh, live trading week day one, uh, where we were down initially um, uh, 55 pips and so uh, we went into day two with people asking for reviews as to what happened on day one what went wrong um, but before we went on to answer all of that we of course in the live trading week took the trades that are setting up for the next day as per the plan without being phased about what happened in the past because this is exactly how a professional operates and then in real time in real market conditions we called the dollar Swiss and the euro dollar and took two trades on those netting 110 pips helping us to finish our live trading with three day event with a 55 pip upside profit that's 550 pounds uh, over that three day period and we did that in real time 
um, with everyone tuning in watching so um that's the uh, that's the key just there uh, we uh, are going to go into the the bulk of the presentation, some of the testimonials that came in. Um, Hello, Simon. Master the Market is one of the best uh, webinars I've ever seen. Thank you so much. Found Thiru and Rishi's program excellent. There's best quantitative uh, strategies available for retail traders. Um, as with all Master the Market presentations, we always like to hand prizes out. So um, it's a very interactive presentation. All of the content I'm going to be going over this uh, this afternoon is um, something well worth noteworthy. The content, first of all, itself is incredible. Uh, the prizes uh, really just take it all to a next level. So um, if you can get involved, you can just ch punch things into the chat box as when we ask questions. You have an opportunity to win um, our Traders Essentials Kit, which is seven tools, which any intermediate trader or advanced trader could well worth um, benefit from. Uh, so that's the key just there. Let's continue on. And uh, let's go over to what we're going to be covering in the presentation. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how we've quantified our parameters to give us reproducibility and scalability. So one of the ways we know a strategy will actually work or not work is because we execute it consistently. The only way we're able to do that is because we have a quantified set of parameters that give us reproducibility and scalability. Now, I'm also going to show you some ways in which to know if your strategy is underperforming, i.e. not performing in line with your expectations. Um, what uh, do you do about maximizing profits? So um, I'm going to show you that as well. So what you can do about it if you feel your strategy is underperforming so you can stop that and maximize the profits. So these are the three things that I'm going to cover over this uh, next 50 minute period. Um, there I haven't got a formal section in here for Q&A. Actually, the presentation will run throughout the end. So what I'd recommend you do is if you have any questions whatsoever, and I can see quite a few questions coming in already, um, I would strongly recommend that you punch them into the chat box uh, because I will pause for a minute or so in order to be able to pick up and answer questions. Uh, so um, if we uh, go over onto the next slide, let's have a look at what we're looking at. Let's understand the problem. So first of all, most traders will start to trade a strategy without knowing, one, what the concept and objective is, two, when to know if it stops working, uh, and three, when to cut off uh, such changes parameters. Now, how many of the traders uh, that we have present in the room today are already trading at the moment? Punch a Y into the chat box. Let me know if you are already trading at the moment. It'd be interesting to see um, and get a rough idea of who is and perhaps who is not trading at the moment. If you're not trading at the moment, punch in a no because I'd like to see what it looks like as a comparison from those of you that aren't trading that may be just gathering some information at this time, uh, but perhaps looking to transition into it. And um, for those of you that are uh, trading at the moment, I'll just give you a second or so to punch that information in. Okay, we've got quite a few answers in the box there. I'm just having a quick look. I've only got uh, probably around about, it looks probably like maybe about 10% of people, 10 or 15% of people out of everyone that's answered is not trading at the moment. So I'm assuming that sort of 80 to 85% of you are already trading at the moment and I'm, so I'm going to tailor the presentation according to that. Uh, the reason for asking that is I know which level of difficulty to sort of go in at and it's much easier for me to talk to people who are already trading uh, because of course uh, then you know we can talk about practical standpoint. So for those of you that are already trading, here's my next question. My next question is if you're trading already, um, 
how many of you know the answers to all three of these questions? What the concept and objective of your strategy is, when to know if it stops working, and when to cut off slash change its parameters. Put a Y or an N into the chat box. If you do know the answer to all three questions, put in a Y. If you don't, put in an N. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all of the answers to these questions are basically just allowing me to just tailor uh, how I'm going to talk about what I've put together today. So thank you very much for those of you um, that are given an answer. Also, if you feel I'm moving a little quickly, then do let me know as well. It's just due to the amount of content that I really want to get through. So um, let's go into the presentation. So what we have found Right, let's have a quick look. I'm just checking my question box. Right, so, okay, so it's interesting. No no one has actually got the answers to all three of those questions. So um, this is the this most, most interesting part of this, um, of this whole conundrum because really to be able to trade successfully, you need to know when to not trade. And you need the way you only way you can need to know when to not trade is if you are able to get a strong understanding of what your strategy's performance is like to the downside, because you need to know if your strategy still works according to the current market conditions. And if you don't know that, then you've obviously you've got you've got a challenge there. So what we're going to go over is uh, what most traders actually do, which is they use a set of inconsistent parameters. The parameter set that they use actually is not consistent. Uh, and as a result of that, what generally tends to happen is the uh, inconsistent execution occurs. So when you have a set of parameters which are inconsistent, you then get inconsistent execution. As to say, let's say for example, sometimes I'll assess the stochastic oscillator, sometimes I'll use the MACD to gain an understanding of if I should or shouldn't be in a trade. Well, what generally tends to happen is people will sometimes use these and then they'll sometimes take trades according to them and then of course because they do that sometimes their execution is inconsistent. Finally, these two things both lead to an invalid set of statistics. Now if you don't have consistent execution and consistent parameters, you cannot get a valid set of statistics. Any stats you accumulate in a trade journal are irrelevant. They, they're actually meaningless, they actually carry no weight at all, and they can't actually give you a true representation of how your trading strategy performs. So what generally tends to happen is you get an inconsistent set of results, and with that, now that inconsistent result, set of results is quite interesting because it can be profitable, and it can be losing. Now, generally speaking, with most traders that we train, because they're using um, strategies which don't have a, a strong edge behind them, they generally tend to be inconsistent losing set of results. But even if you get trading strategy which you've used inconsistent parameters on with a consistent set of um, profitable results, you won't have the confidence and the conviction in it to scale it up onto larger money and to be able to trade much larger money and to get much better return. And that's where most of the traders that we work with actually fall over. And that's actually the gap that we're able to bridge. So actually I'm going to show you a live case study for a trading strategy which we were running at Master the Markets, um, which actually had this exact issue and how we then tackled it and what we did to overcome it. So the lift off 1.0 trading strategy, it's um, a strategy that was built in order to be able to give us um, a retracement to a moving average following a bounce off and then a continuation move higher. 
If you look at the liftoff to 1.0 trading strategy, what it generally did in back testing um, and what it generally did in forward testing for the first three years at least was relatively consistent. But what we found from the back testing was we understood a figure which we call our maximum drawdown. Now the maximum drawdown was basically the period of time over which we suffered the largest set of losses. Now you can see that in the test back testing results in 2010, in between June, July and August we had a minus 4% loss. Um, in the 2011, September, October we had a minus 4.53. Now the fact that it finished on a 17.99% upside for 2010 is not what's relevant here. This trade strategy is actually very powerful and very profitable for the time that we were running it. What we needed to understand was when to stop running it. So this is what we had. So in forward testing, when we actually rolled the trading strategy out, these are the results that we actually found. Now, again, just referring back to our back testing, we go back and look on our chart. See, again here, you can see the June, July, and August period, which is represented on this chart just here. That period of time was three months, and we had a 4% loss. Now, we call this our peak to valley drawdown. In a moment, I'm going to give you a definition of what a peak to valley drawdown is. Um, we also then had another peak to valley drawdown here of 3.26% over a month. Now, this is what actually happened in historical testing. Then we had a max peak to valley drawdown, which was the 4.53% over a two month period. Now, the reason that that was the max peak to valley drawdown is because we lost the highest amount of equity um, at any given time. And so this was an important thing to note because this was giving us a little clue as to if this happens again in the future, when can we actually cut this off? So that was the key thing to, to note just there. So um, this is the, the, the main thing. So really what we needed to understand from this is if we know this in testing, in historical testing, only if we know this information can we then apply to real market conditions when we actually roll this trading strategy out. So it's a lot of study of the downsides, a lot of study of the risk, which I find that actually no one trains people on at all. I've never come across any training material where people are actually trained to understand and analyze how to cut a trading strategy, uh, how to tailor it so that it could be upgraded to get the best set of parameters. None of this stuff is ever taught. And so this is what Master the Markets actually Makes, we make ourselves a little bit different because we're traders first and then trainers. All of the material that you're seeing here is actually from our live real-time experience. This is actually everything that we've got, everything that we've put together um, from our own actual trading, from our own research, from our own analysis, um, from the times that we've made and lost money in the market. So this is how we're able to then teach people on a forward basis. So on the... Um, understanding of what a peak to valley drawdown is, I really want to give you a strong definition. So a maximum peak to valley drawdown is the maximum loss from a peak through to a trough on an equity curve of a trading strategy before a new peak is then obtained. Okay. So again, graphically, if you look back, this is your um, this is your peak here at this mark. Uh, in fact, I've got the tools to, to draw this on for you. Let me do that here. So this here is your peak. This here is your trough. This is the distance in between the two. So we can see that was over three months and 4%. So if we go back to our definition, A max peak to value drawdown is the max loss from a peak through to a trough on an equity curve of strategy before a new peak is obtained. So this is the understanding of a max peak to value drawdown. Are there any questions at this stage uh, that I can answer? Uh, I'm just going to have a look in the question box to see if there are uh, any questions at this time. Uh, someone's asking me who are the owners of Master of the Markets. So the Master of the Markets is actually owned uh, by myself uh, and Tiru jointly. Um, so we're both the owners uh, of Master of the Markets uh, to answer that question. Any other questions perhaps pertinent to the presentation?
No, okay. If there are any questions, punch them into the chat box at any time. I'm going to take small pauses in between the presentation just to answer any questions, just in case you feel that I'm moving at a, a pace which um, isn't allowing you to ask. So do punch questions in as we go along. I'll pick them up and make back references back to the slides that they're relevant to. What I'll do is I'll continue on with the presentation where we are coming up to a point where we have uh, an interactive exercise. As the gift of now, this is interactive exercise one. Uh, this is your opportunity actually to win uh, our Traders Essentials Kit. Um, you may ask what our Traders Essentials Kit is. Um, in a very short while, I'm going to actually uh, show you uh, what our Traders Essentials Kit actually is. And uh, what you'll find is it is a superb set of tools in which you can actually uh, go ahead and get very strong understanding of how you can build your own trading strategies and how you can actually put together your own materials in terms of building a trading strategy, understanding its maximum drawdown, having all the tools to build quantified parameters into your crib sheets and we give you all of that material as well as a couple of trading strategies on there as well for you to pursue and uh, for information for you to review just there. So we give you that as a great little package. Um, and what I'll do is, if Melon's in the room, maybe he can put in a little link to our Traders Essentials Kit website, which will actually give you a little reference point to the actual uh, package of what it looks like. But what we're giving away as a prize, as a quite an exciting prize as, as well, is actually the opportunity to uh, win a discount voucher to our Traders Essentials Kit, which is a superb set of tools. Um, all of the information is on the website, which I'm showing you just here. should be able to see the website come up in just a second. So this is, again, a superb set of tools, seven trading tools, which you can actually use uh, to get a nice little winning edge uh, in the market. So um, you can get access to that. Uh, it's a fantastic set of tools. I have an image a little later on as well. Um, and it also includes a free ticket to our two-day Traders Basecamp workshops. If you'd like to win uh, access to that, then um, all you have to do is answer the following question in the very shortest space of time. So uh, the question is, what uh, do inconsistent parameters and inconsistent execution finally lead to? What do inconsistent execution and inconsistent parameters finally lead to? It's the one that went over, um, and I'm looking for two correct answers in the shortest space of time we will be able to award these prizes over to. So, Okay, there's plenty of answers coming in. Um, thank you very much uh, for taking part. Um, you can I'm seeing all lots of... Okay, great. We actually have two winners now, so if you haven't already had a chance to punch in your answers, you will have another opportunity to win. So um, let's have a look at who the winners currently are. So congratulations to Darren Nix and to... We have... Um, who else do we have here? We have... In fact, it is... Steve Burke. Uh, so both of you are both prize winners, so congratulations for winning um, a, a prize. You need to send across in the chat box, which will just come to myself and Simon, you need to send across your name, your email, and a contact number, so one of my team can give you um, a call and make contact with the warehouse to help you to get this going. Um, if you send that information across ASAP, then we'll pick that up and we'll, of course, make contact so we can get everything underway for you. So uh, congratulations once again to Darren Nix and Steve Burke. Uh, you are both winners. Uh, you need to send across your name. We sent you across your name already. Your email address and your contact number so that we can make contact. Okay, great. I'm going to carry on in the meantime. So... Um, Liftoff 1.0 in real time. So with back testing, what happened? Uh, 
With back testing, we had such a set of results. With forward testing, we had these results. Now, the key things to understand were in forward testing, when we got to 2012, we actually had a warning here because the max drawdown was initially exceeded. Now, just because the max drawdown was exceeded once, it doesn't mean you necessarily need to cut everything and run. It's just perhaps a warning that the market could be changing, and so it gives us a little bit of a heads up so we can carry on trading the strategy. However, when it happens the second time, that's the warning signal to really cut off and to say, hey, you know what, something's happening here that's not quite right and in line with your back testing, and this is the point in which you can stop trading. Again, all of these things in your trading strategy, even before you roll them out, they should be clearly understood, they should be clearly quantified. And again, if you go to any training company and they give you a trading strategy and they aren't able to give you this information, it doesn't build your conviction in the actual strategy itself. My question straight away to anyone trading a strategy is, okay, great, what is your maximum drawdown? Um, how will you know um, when to stop trading? Um, and such questions like this, because you really need to understand this. And unless you have the deeper understanding of this, you don't know where to cut it off. You don't know where to cut it off. You cannot preserve your capital. You cannot preserve your winning trades. This is what's essential. This is what's important. So that's the uh, that's the key just there on the uh, on the real time results for the for the lift of 1.0. If we look at it graphically, um, those two points which I've illustrated here on the on the on the table are demonstrated here on the chart. So you had your initial peak to valley drawdown, which was an 8.26% loss over four months. This is really a warning to say, hey, you know something could be changing here. So this is our first kind of, if you like, first strike. Uh, and then, of course, if it happens again, then it's really a point at which you need to say, you know what, this trading strategy has now stopped working, and whatever capital I've made from it, I now need to take a step back, and I need to move on to the next trading strategy, or I need to do something about this, because I need to stop trading. So when this happened to us in real time, you can see that it did actually here in, um, in June 2000. Uh, and 15 is actually when this gave us the heads up to say, hey, do you know what? This is actually not now in line anymore with our backtesting results. So what can we do? Um, and this is really what makes Master the Markets different. And this is, I really want to illustrate this because it's such an important point. Because we do know what the concept and the objective of our trading strategy is. It's A, to capture 70% of a phase one move after a market accumulation. Um, the second thing is we need to know when uh, our trading strategy is going to stop working. And we do know when it exceeds a 4.53% loss over three months or more on two separate and independent occasions. This is when we know our strategy stops working. So again, can you see that every single element of this is heavily quantified? Can you see that every single element of this is um, is actually perfectly done in the sense that it's so quantified, it's so tight, that it can't be refuted. And, you know, if anyone gives you a less tight answer than this, then you know that they don't really know what they're talking about. Again, because having attended so many conferences and spoken to so many traders, and myself and Thiru having coached 20,000 plus people, you start to see patterns in psychology. Because people are just people, psychology is very standard, this is what makes the market move as well. And generally in a conference when I asked, I remember actually when I asked um, at, the, uh, at one of the conferences uh, in 2013 in Tower Hill, um, I think there are about 300 people in the audience, and I asked the question, how would you know when to stop trading your strategy? Some people raised their hand, some people said 10% loss, 20% loss, 50% loss. When I asked the question why, they wouldn't be able to answer that. It's a guess, so it's a ballpark. But it's not a quantified number, it's not a valid reason to stop trading. Something. Just because something exceeds a 10% loss, it doesn't necessarily mean it stopped working. It may be normal to the system before it picks up and has a huge winning streak. At Master the Markets, we teach you how to understand the depth of either your trading strategy or the ones that we've already pre-built that you just need to follow and can pretty easily make money out of, actually. Um, when to cut off or change its parameters? When the max peak to valley drawdown is exceeded twice, that's when we know to cut its parameters. So at this point, we need to we need to do something about the trading strategy. Great. This leads me on to another question because I think we had probably around about 20, 30, 40 different answers that came in for the last question. I can see there is 
um, an element of demand here for, for prize winners. So what I'll do is we'll offer another two prizes. Again, you know the way this works. Um, you need to put in your answer into the chat box. It's the correct answer. Um, and I will let you know who the winner is and then my colleague will ask you for your details. Um, you need to put the correct answer in in the quickest space of time. That's how this works, very simply. So here is the question. And again, this is for access to our Traders Essentials Kit. Um, this is the question that's uh, coming up just here. So what is the definition of the max peak to valley drawdown? What is the definition of the max peak to valley drawdown? Okay, what is the what is the definition for the max peak to valley drawdown? And on the screen as well, you should be able to see in a couple of seconds the uh, Traders Essentials Kit, which comprises of a movie, which we've actually made a trading documentary, which we launched in the Empire Cinema in 2014, uh, and that was a documentary made by myself and Tiru. Um, you're going to get access to that, plus um, our premium material on placing orders, our live trading videos, our crib sheet template, our journal templates, and a psychology audio program. Everything comes on this neat um, gold 8 gigabyte USB key be sent straight to your straight to your door. You're getting 50% discount voucher for this superb set of tools um, and access to a free ticket on our two-day workshop. We actually go into the depth on a lot of this material. So the, the, the best definition for a for a peak to valley drawdown. Go ahead and punch it into the box. Um, and I'm going to give you, this is a slightly longer definition, so I'm going to give you an answer, uh, an opportunity to answer the question. So far, we've we've only got one correct answer, so there is uh, an opportunity to someone to come in and claim the second, to claim the second prize. One answer so far has come in that's correct. There are still opportunities. You're going to need to give James, thank you for that. You're going to need to give slightly more detail than that. Um, congratulations to Stephen Jones uh, on winning the first prize. There is an, one more prize left. I'll give you an opportunity for another minute or so to punch in your answer uh, into the chat box should you be able to give the best definition. Uh, we will, of course, go ahead and... It's very close, and the answers have come in. Very good. That's exactly correct. So congratulations to Stephen Jones and to Richard Rogers on getting the correct answers. Um, again, you, if you are typing in, you could stop typing at this stage. Um, we do have two correct answers. Thank you very much uh, amongst all of the answers that have come in. It's quite difficult sometimes, but um, if you can send across uh, Stephen Jones and and uh, Richard Rogers, if you can send across your name, email, and a contact number uh, into the chat box, then uh, we will, of course, make contact. So, well, thank you very much for taking part. Let's continue on with the rest of the presentation. So, when we reach our max peak to valley drawdown, what happens then? Well, we're traders. How can we just stop trading? That doesn't make sense. On the slide prior to this, I put a message saying stop trading. It doesn't make sense to stop trading. There's how can we just do that? We're traders. We need to navigate the financial markets in order to make money. So we don't stop trading. What we do is we upgrade the trading strategy. Um, if the trading strategy has a strong concept and objective behind it, if the trading strategy has an edge behind it, which has been defined and is powerful, then what we do is we upgrade the trading strategy. And the way we do this is by using the three components of a trading system, which is master the market methodology. So the methodology, of course, is first you have strategy component. The strategy component comprises of a crib sheet. So these are your rules for entry, your rules for stop loss, your target, your money management. Um, so your crib sheet, and again, there is a template. Sorry. 
So there is a template uh, which you can obtain in the Traders Essentials Kit, which of course is based on a strategy component. And the strategy component, of course, is what's key inside of this. So the crib sheet rules um, for rules for entry, stop loss, target, and money management all contained within there. So that's the key. So the second thing that you have is a psychology component. So the psychology component, what generally tends to happen is you have your emotional component. This is the thing that allows you to execute the trading system according to a consistent set of parameters and according to your plan. Now check this out, because if you can have the best strategy in the world, I can give you the parameter set for what I'm about to show you, which is Liftoff 2.0. You can gain access to all of that, um, but if you don't have access to um, the correct psychology, if you don't have the mindset to be able to execute this con consistently, and again, this is why in the Traders Essentials Kit, there is a full-on psychology audio program which you can work through to help you get your mindset right before you go into the market. If you don't have the right psychology, you still won't be able to get the optimum results. And then finally, we go to the optimization components. Now, that's where we review our statistics, including our reliability, our expectancy. And we can review things like our max drawdowns. We can look at what is the peak to valley, and all of this information. And that's exactly what we did. See, we've gone to the strategy component. We've executed consistently. Now we're optimizing. We're actually on this stage. With the lift of 1.0, we actually reached this stage where we've decided to optimize. And so what we do is we optimize, and this loops back into the strategy component. And then we upgrade the trading strategy from lift of 1.0 to lift of 2.0. Now we have a new crib sheet with a new set of rules. How can we refine our entries? How can we take less trades but still get more upside? These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. And then again, we execute consistently. And then again, we look for optimization opportunities. But this was what will give us a consistent set of results. Now again, I want you to understand one key thing. The consistent results that I've put there on the left-hand side does not mean that the results are profitable. It does not mean that the that the results are losing. It just means that they're consistent. With a base of consistent results, once your foundation is strong, then at that stage, you're able to build and optimize and make better what you've already put together. And this is the key thing. So, you know, this is what we are currently uh, looking to understand. This is what we're currently looking to actually to do. And you need to know that a consistent set of results in the lift of 1.0 at one stage, the, the results were no longer profitable. They were sideways and then they became losing. So what happened is we still had consistent results. So we were able to optimize and tweak. We were to understand where is the system going wrong when we looked back at the trades. And the, the, the stats that we had were valid. They made sense. And this is the big key difference between having a set of components at the beginning, at the top level in this strategy, of having a set of components which are, they are, they're quantified. They can be reproduced, they can be scaled. And this is what makes the difference. If you don't have this in a trading system, if your parameters that you trade with are loose, if you guess where swing highs and swing lows are, if you guess where to draw Fibonacci levels to and from, if you're lacking you know, conviction in terms of when to use the stochastic or the MACD, more than likely your trading is very discretionary. And if it is very discretionary, then your statistics, your bottom line results can't be measured. And even if they're profitable, you lack the conviction in scaling up those profits. And that's the key thing here. I do believe that it's possible to trade discretionary, but probably only after 30 or 40 years of trading experience, once you've understood the market at the deepest possible level, um, it is possible to trade on a discretionary basis. But up until then, I do believe that it is the quant hedge funds, actually. And this is a very quantified approach. It's almost quant trading um, that we're doing here, actually, because it's the quant hedge funds that we find that are able to hit the biggest figures. Um, and there is a reason for that. So we're pulling concepts from a lot of quant traders that we're studying into the retail markets. Um, and Mark Brown, who you saw at the Elite Trades Conference, is a quant trader for 40 plus years. We've been fortunate enough to be mentored by him. He pretty much pioneered automated trading. So our approach has always been around quantification. That's what's given us the results. So now if we study this model and we look at the liftoff 2.0, what we did with the liftoff 2.0 is we took 
away a lot of the trades which we shouldn't have been in. We actually optimized, refined, we fine-tuned and we filtered out a lot of opportunities. And so what happened is we actually saved on making the losses because what would have happened in the lift off 1.0, we actually end up giving away our profits again towards the back end of 2016. So this actually represents December 2016. You can see if we'd carried on trading the lift off 1.0 all the way through, to December 2016, it would have actually given away all of its profitability. That is a system that had fallen over. But we were quickly able to identify that it hit its maximum drawdown. And so what we'd done at that stage is we'd identified that we'd gone into the liftoff 2.0, we'd integrated more parameters such as Fibonacci retracements, looking at weekly trend correlations, we'd integrated a lot more parameters into it to make the signals much tighter. And with those tighter signals, you can see in markets that weren't trending in 2015 and 16, we had very gentle trends, we didn't have much movement in the market. The liftoff 2.0 still ended up making net profit, one. Secondly, it did not give away um, all of the capital we'd accumulated in the first four years of trading. And this is what's critical, this is what's absolutely essential to understand. It's not sometimes about how much money you can make, it's about how much money you can save. And that's just as important. And that's very much my message for our webinar um, that I'm running with you all this afternoon. So it's the liftoff 2.0. If you look, there are some interesting statistics to look at. Firstly, you can see over this five-year period, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, from two, it up here, it actually says 12 to 14. That's actually a typo. This is from 2012 to 16. 169 trades on the liftoff 1.0 but a net profit of only 0.03%. So it basically ended up, if we had traded it all the way, would have given back all of its profit that it had made. However, if you look at the liftoff 2.0, you can see we only took 139 trades instead of the 169, but we still end up with net profit 43.65% at the end of those five years, 12 through 16. And this is the thing that we really need to understand. This is a very, very powerful trading strategy because we identified when to stop trading it, because we identified actually when we needed to pull back and cut um, and stop and actually gain a strong understanding of what to do when something is falling over. So I think we've reached a very natural um, space at which I can now answer any questions um, because I'm pretty much approaching the end of the webinar. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put myself on pause for around about two to three minutes. Uh, my mic is going to go quiet uh, while I put myself on mute. This is your opportunity to ask any questions that you want in regards to anything you've seen on this presentation. I'm happy to go back to any of the slides or show you live examples if that's what you'd like to see um, or answer anything in regards to what I've been over in this presentation um, for the next five minutes or so. So I'm going to put myself on mute, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask any questions.
Okay. Um, so a couple of questions have come into the chat box just there. I'm going to answer Robert one's first. Robert's one first because that's the easiest. Uh, Robert went to the kitchen and came back and said, "There's no audio. Is it a pause or have I got a problem?" Uh, Robert, there has a pause there uh, for um, just a second while we uh, just gave people the opportunity to ask some questions just there. But thank you for that. Um, Let's go over to the next question, and that is from Tina. Uh, Tina says, how many different strategies do you now um, have something on or do you use in different market conditions? Uh, hat pair, are these, you use them? Tina, perhaps you can rephrase your question there. Um, I've understood the first part, which is how many different strategies you now have settled on, I think it is, to use in different market conditions. That's really, I think that's the question. How many different strategies have you used to settle on in different market conditions? And how many pairs do you use them on? I'm going to read your question that way. So um, we actually, in the, it depends, we have two trading um, methodologies. One of them, of course, is swing trading, where we hold a trade between three and 10 days. Um, the other is intraday trading. Um, so for intraday trading, we actually have two trading strategies. Um, they are called Morning Glory PREF 3.0 uh, and Morning Glory uh, 3.0 HL. Um, these are the two, two trading strategies we actually use in real time, real market conditions. These can gross anywhere between uh, 20 and 70% per year in terms of a gross return for us on our intraday trading. On an, um, again, and I have all the statistics for every strategy in the exact same way um, that I've shown you for this lift off uh, 1.0 and 2.0 as well. Um, so we have a lot of conviction in those. We trade those in real time. Uh, on the swing trading basis, we use three trading strategies. Um, it's actually, two of them we actually teach at the Two Day Traders Basecamp workshop: um, lift off and dynamic breakout, um, and uh, one that we have just rolled out actually, which is called uh, Profit Run, um, which is all around the formation of swing highs and lows. And that's a superb little strategy because that's a non-trending strategy. And where the other two strategies we teach are trending strategies. The non-trading strategy actually makes money even if the market is in a sideways movement. Um, so that is what makes that different. You really need to have a great combination between the two. And so, of course, that's what we've done as well. Um, how many pairs do we use them on? That's a very good question. I'm going to answer that um, by giving a, a live presentation, which is also what James has asked me for just there as well. I do need to be aware of time, and we're OK for now. So what I can do why don't I see if it's possible to give you, as you said here, a live presentation. Let me see if I can go ahead and pull open a an Excel spreadsheet actually showing you um, the answers to some of these questions in terms of which pairs do we use. So do bear with me just a moment while I pull that up. Um, and I'll do that for you now wasn't actually a part of the core presentation, but I'm pretty confident I can do that very quickly. So, okay, great questions. Okay, good, great questions. So let me answer some of this. Um, Tina has asked me the question as to, uh, Tina's asked me the question as to which, which currencies, how many currencies do we trade this with? The answer is, is that we test everything. At most of the markets, there's no guesswork. We don't say, mm, we feel like trading the euro yen today, but we don't really feel like trading the pound dollar uh, because it doesn't quite look like the right setup. Everything is mathematical, it's quantified, it's either on or it's off. There is no guessing. That takes out the emotion which allows us to consistently execute much easier. Um, so if we look, for example, at the dollar yen, Dolly yen is actually a really good thing to look at. If you look at the dolly yen lift off 1.0, it's consistently, pretty much year on year, a losing currency. If you look at the uh, dollar yen on the lift off 2.0, it doesn't really yield that much in terms of a result. So it's a lot of effort to take those trades on the dollar yen for pretty much not much return. So the answer is, in terms of which pairs do we trade, the answer is, well, we'll observe 
which does work and which doesn't, which is going to add value and which doesn't, and will strip out the whatever, whatever it is that's, that's the noise. Um, so you can see here on liftoff 2.0, Dollar yen in a percentage basis isn't really that valuable, but if I'm trading it on a pound per pip basis, uh, which you can do with these swing trades as well, you can see dollar yen over the five years has still grossed to 340 pip return, and that's 3,400 pounds over that time, and so um, adding that onto the five years isn't such a bad return. So you can still, it depends, the answer is on your testing. So how many currencies do we trade for liftoff? The answer is five. Do we trade a different number of currencies for dynamic breakout? The answer is yes, because different currencies work better on that one. Do we trade different amount of currencies on morning glory and on the profit run? The answer is yes. And then, of course, beyond uh, what we do at the base level with the Vedanta Elite team, we also trade other strategies such as smart money. These also have different currencies which we trade, but we have tested everything so we know what does and what doesn't work, and we're able to monitor drawdowns in real time, real market conditions, so we know when to adjust things and when not to. So um, I hope that answers that question. Um, exact, this, Tina, this is such a superb point in terms of curve fitting, and the one way in which we ensure and guarantee that there's no curve fitting at all is because what we do is when we take when we see our initial set of results, for example, this is the initial set of results for the liftoff 2.0. Now, if we want to improve the, um, the, the percentage of returns over 2015 and 16, we will not go back and look at the charts and see which trades lost and adjust our journals and adjust our crib sheets accordingly. What we'll do is we'll step away from the screen, we'll take a printout of our crib sheet, and in a brainstorming session at a board meeting with the members of the team, um, which, we, which we're doing research with, which is headed by myself and Tiru, we will actually sit down and discuss and say, hey, you know what do we feel when we were trading these these currencies, when we were actually running these tests, what do we feel was not working? Okay, there was too much chop. How do we reduce the chop? Right, let's introduce this parameter and this parameter. And we'll completely refit the crib sheet, and then only will we go back to screen, not the other way around. But you've made a superb point, but there's no curve fitting at all here. And this is the one danger of doing this type of work, and I totally agree with you. So thank you for that question um, just there. Um, it would be good to go over the two answers you did in your exercises quickly, says uh, says Alec. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Um, okay, let me do that for you now. Let me do that for you now. Um, Alan is asking if uh, which trading strategies you learn in the Trades Base Camp. You're going to learn the trading strategy. Um, you're going to learn several trading strategies in Traders Basecamp actually, so it's going to add a lot of value, but it's not necessarily the strategies you're going to learn at Traders Basecamp. That's a very small part of what we do. Uh, what we do at Traders Basecamp is we teach you at a deeper level actually how to get involved. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll go over the two answers. First of all, I'm going to ask one more question before I conclude my presentation, because there were, I was conscious that there were a lot of people that asked questions, that answered questions, didn't get an opportunity to answer. So there's one more interactive exercise if you'd like to take part. Here's the question. Remember, it's for a Traders Essentials kit. It's an observation question, very simple one. Did we take more or less trades in Liftoff 2.0? The first two answers that are correct here are going to win the Traders Essentials kit discount as well as the free tickets to the Traders Basecamp. Um, so the Traders Essentials kit is the one demonstrated just there. Um, and let's see, we do have two correct answers in the very shortest space of time. Congratulations to Tom C. and Samuel Crow. You've both given the correct answer. It was less trades taken in Liftoff 2.0, and you've answered in the shortest space of time. You can I see many, many more answers coming in. You can stop putting your answers in now. We do have winners. Thank you very much for taking part in all of the prizes. We love to give away prizes over here, as we know. Um, but uh, thank you very much for uh, taking part. We will uh, now look to um, just conclude. So uh, in this presentation, I've shown you how we've quantified our parameters by building a model, which gives us reproducibility and scalability. This is the key thing behind a trading model. One key way in which you know your strategy is underperforming, you can look at the uh, max drawdown um, using the peak to valley ratios that we've gone over, uh, and also what you can do about it, you can upgrade your trading strategy 
um, by coming away from the market, taking an objective look at how you can uh, change your strategy and then come back to it and then retest and go into the market once again. So uh, we've gone over that. I hope this has presented a superb amount of value for all of you. I do, from my objective, I'm obviously biased. Um, I think it's a fantastic presentation, uh, but I hope that you do as well. Um, it's our genuine intention to want to serve traders like you um, and to do the very best for you. Uh, Samuel and uh, the other winner, uh, Tom C. and Samuel, congratulations on winning. You need to send across your email address and mobile number. Both things are required, um, are very important. So if you can send that across, then we will make contact with you to issue your prize. Um, and that leads me towards my final slides, which is just talking about the Traders Essentials Kit, um, which Millen will be putting a link into the chat box now for. It's shipped free absolutely anywhere in the world. And I see many, many people interested in actually obtaining a copy uh, and asking about that. So what you can do is you can get a copy of the Traders Essentials Kit. It is um, all in and around the placing orders. Um, how we place the use the stops, the limits, how we've got some live trading examples, how we've got a professional crib sheet template for you to use and make your strategy, how you can actually build um, a tra how you've actually pre-built a trade journal for you with all of our formulas in there. It's all of our premium IP as well as a psychology audio program as well as the um, movie that we launched in the Empire Cinema in Leicester Square. You get a copy of that. It'll all be on that USB key for you just there along with a welcome letter. And for the first 10 purchases of the Traders Essentials kit on the website, we are giving away the recordings of all three days of the live trading week if you weren't able to make that, plus the three trading strategies and presentations we gave um, on the live trading week as well. You'll get access to the PDFs for all of that. The reason that we're giving that away is because one of those strategies, very close to um, one of the strategies was the stops to cash trading strategy, which is the one that we actually used um, a very close modification of stops to cash on the on the webinar itself, uh, which is the one that grossed uh, the profit that you saw um, on the on the actual journal just there. So we took five trades. It gave us signals for five trades. You saw that there over the over the actual five days. We took them live and in real time, ending up with a gross profit of 550 pounds. One of those trading strategies is very close to the stops to cash, which is given away for free for the first 10 purchases of the Traders Essentials kit. Um, and that's a summary of all of the items that you get just there. You'll also get a 50% discount voucher to our Traders Basecamp two-day workshop as well. £97 plus VAT is the cost of the entire kit, plus all of the free bonuses that we're giving away. It is a premium set of tools. It's not for everyone by any means. Um, it is absolutely for traders who want to quantify their approach, get their results from being so sporadic and having those ups and downs continuously their entire trading career and just having that tweak, that inch millimeter movements to get you from where you are to being consistently profitable. And that's the main thing just there. So the Traders Essentials Kit link has gone into the chat box just there. Simon's put that in for us very kindly. Um, you can click onto that and hit the blue button um, on the website saying take the next step um, and you will be able to qualify immediately uh, for that. The first 10 purchases will of course get all the recordings from the live trading week as well as all the presentations um, just there. So go ahead and fill out all your information and we can get you up and running and our team will send you an email out. If you're within the first 10 purchases, the team will send you an email out immediately with that, um, with that information, that material. I want to say thank you very much for tuning in to what is, of, of course, a very full presentation, a very um, well, fast paced presentation, I imagine, but there's a recording so you can watch it back in your own time. I wanted to pack in as much value as I could and with that said, I'm happy to hand over to Simon. Okay, Rishi Patel, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that. We're right up to the four o'clock, so we're just going to... Uh...